welcome. Thank you for joining me, the Old Grumpy Prosperity Team, and the Prophet Diva for this special presentation of Grow Your Mind and Money. We are interviewing Errol Allen, internationally renowned customer service guru, acclaimed writer and speaker, and a master of process and system design. Errol has experienced the other side of the mountain, the valley, and the mountaintop, and has used those challenges to empower himself and others to stay the course and take the actions to fulfill their dreams. Earl's willingness to share his heart, not just his knowledge, to make a difference, has him be a champion for humanity. Before we continue, it's time to see what prospering thoughts our Mr. Ronnie has for us on today. Ronnie Bean? Thank you, ma'am. Wow. Wow. Say what you want to get what you want from yourself or others, you have to say what you want. You must be clear and specific. Do you resent others because they don't treat you the way you wish to be treated? There's a good chance they don't completely understand how you prefer to be treated. That understanding requires more than just assumptions, complaints, and insinuations. Be clear, detailed, unambiguous about what you want. And most people are quite willing to oblige. Do you have trouble getting yourself to take the actions that will achieve the goals you desire? Then articulate those goals in a more compelling and specific way. When you're clear and certain about what you intend to achieve, you will find a way to get it done instead of wishing for a vague idea of something nice. You're able to work toward something specific, ask specifically, and you will receive specifically, whether from yourself, or someone else. Say what you want, and you're much more likely to get it. What I'm present to about myself and growing my mind when it comes to the theme, say what you want, is how being mealy mouth has cost me respect and power. The possibility I'm inventing for myself and my life is the possibility of being a gracious, straight shooter. And what I give up for that possibility to be real is the conversation, I am being judged. It's time for our special interview with Errol Allen. Empress Nakia, please take it away. Powerful, powerful. Thank you, Ronnie Bean. In this part of the interview, we learn about a challenge Errol faced in having his dream fulfilled, a challenge that knocked the wind out of his sails. Somehow, some way, he kept going and turned that challenge from seeming defeat to victory. Errol, first of all, thank you so much for being on our show tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, thank you, Nakia. Um, thank you for having me on the show. It's an honor when you get invited to participate um, on somebody's platform. So I'm very appreciative of um, the, the ability to be on the show with you guys today. Awesome, awesome. So let's get straight into it, okay? Now. Okay. So, Errol, please share an incident or time in your life that knocked the wind out of your sails and the going got rough. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay, let's go back to um, 2014. 2014. Um, in 2014, I found myself with very little money, very little. When I say very little, I mean very, very little money. And... Um, I had left a good job to start my business. So here I am, 
um, with their money and um, and had to make a decision. Do I keep going in the direction that I want to go with my business or do I go get a job? What do I what do? I do? Mm, that, was, yeah. that, was, that was a pretty tough situation then. Okay. So tell me a little bit more about why was this such a a difficult decision to make? Why was this so challenging for you? Tell us a little bit more about it. Ooh, you know, it's, it's like how do you keep the lights on? You know, how do you keep gas in the car? How do you eat? You know, and and so I just found myself in that quandary. What do I do? You know, it. it I found myself. Let me just say this. One of my friends. You know, asked me. He said, "Had you had you thought about getting a Lone Star car?" And my answer was, "No, I hadn't thought about that." And he said, "Eric, you've been working since you were 15 years old, man. You you know, it's okay to 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 ask for help." So <laughs> I did because I was shopping at the, I was grocery shopping at the dollar store. You know, um, taking fifteen twenty dollars to to the dollar store and and just getting what I could so that I could. I could eat, you know. My dog was eating better than me. You know, my my dog was raised on science diet. You know, you don't you don't you know play around with a dog's uh, digestive system because you can you can mess them up. So my dog was eating better than me. But when um, I, I made the decision, okay, go ahead and apply for the Lone Star car. So I ended up getting the Lone Star car and was able to start buying some decent groceries. You know. Um, you know, just those kind of things. I, I remember one winter, if you want to call it a winter here in Houston, but, you know, on the cold days, I can remember, I think that was late 2013. I think it was, yeah. I didn't have any heat in my house, right? So that meant, you know, you don't, no, no heat, uh, no hot water, right? So I'm taking cold showers. That, you know, that, that doesn't feel too good. So, you know, it was pretty tough. Yeah, but I just, you know, I was just determined not to, not to, not to give up. Okay, got it. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so during that time that you were living off of food stamps and you had to really make that decision, um, what were you de- when when you were dealing with that situation? Did you blame other people, your circumstances, or yourself for being in that space? <laughs> well, you know that's that's I don't know just being human. That's probably the first thing they do is is well point the finger and say and it was somebody else's fault that you know caused us to. But then I, I had to really you know ask myself, okay, um, it was your decision to do this to 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 leave you know a good job where you were making good money, you had a company car and a gas car and. You kind of had the freedom to do what you wanted to do. It was your decision. Nobody else made the decision. It was your decision. So you you, you can't point the finger because pointing the finger is not going to help you to, you know, uh, improve the situation. It's just going to keep you in that cycle of of where you are now versus where you want to go. So, Did it keep um, you in that cycle? Because I'm, I'm asking about you specifically, not – general people, but I'm I'm asking about you. When you, during that time, were you dealing with the situation, did you blame other people, your circumstances, or, or yourself? Well, like I, like I said, initially, that thought crossed my mind, you know, point the finger, right? But then um, I, I had to point the finger back at myself and, and, and tell myself, you know, n- nobody made you leave your job, right? And so it's 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 your it's a situation you created yourself, so um deal with it, okay, so you were talking to yourself at that time, you were telling yourself I, talking I gotta deal right. with it okay. right. I was telling myself. right, okay, got it, so okay, now, at what point did you stop caring about who or what to blame in this experience <laughs> when when I saw things weren't getting any better, when I was in that in that um, blame mode, that's when I, I realized um, 
this is not making the situation any better of blaming anybody. And it, it, I have to stop and, and, and get on the positive signal, get off the negative signal, get on the positive signal um, to, to get where I really was trying to go. Um, so at that point when I realized this is not getting me anywhere, that's when I, when, when things started to change for me. Was there a particular experience that happened, something, a moment that kind of like opened your eyes and were like, man, you know, was there a particular moment that that occurred? <laughs> when I found myself at my lowest is is when my eyes were open. It's like if you don't do something um, um, yourself and stop blaming uh, or looking for somebody to blame, or, or or even blaming my, you know, blaming myself, you know, for the decision I made. It was it was when I was at my lowest that I knew I had to do something different, and and looking at who who was to blame or, uh, or what was to blame uh, was not going to help me. So being at my lowest point helped me to see got to do something different. Uh, this is not helping you. Okay, so when when did you see the light of possibility, the light of freedom and possibility? You know what? Um, I, I say this all the time. Thank God for good friends because my I, I have especially two friends that I have. Um, we've been friends for you know over over twenty five years, and they actually saw the light of possibility before me. Um, they would remind me of things that were were starting to happen, positive things that were starting to happen. You know, articles in the, you know, being published in the Houston Business Journal. Um, uh, one of my friends said, "Hey, man, do you do you understand that most people would pay to get an article in the Houston Business Journal?" He said, "You you just submit articles and they put them in there." And he said, "How many articles have you had in Houston?" I said, oh, "Maybe six now." And he said, man, you you, you got to be able to see, you know, what's getting ready to happen. So it was it was then um, that I became more positive about what I was doing and, and to and, and start taking, as you said, some steps toward the light. You know, you got to be able to know the light is there in order to st- take steps toward the light. So when my friends helped me to see, the 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 light of freedom and the and the light of possibility. That's when I start believing, you know, in in myself and what I was doing, um, um, to to get me out of the the mental, you know, quagmire where nothing good could get in. So I, I think I thank God for my friends that helped me to see. Hey, there's a there's a lot of things that you're doing that's going to turn into something if you just. Um, Keep being positive and and have have uh, positive expectations for yourself. Okay, so outside of the the positive expectations and the mental uh, rigor and training that you started to develop yourself in, what other actions that we can see that you actually begin to to take toward making that progress toward freedom and possibility yourself? Well, the the, the first action is. Have a mental, you know, positive mental mindset. Mm-hmm. I, I I had to have a mindset shift, right, from a negative mindset, just focusing on what situation I was in, to having a positive mindset of where I wanted to go, uh, where I could see, and 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 what I could see myself doing. I had to change my mindset first. So that was the first step, and then to believe in what I was doing and that it had value to it. Um, and then um, getting in front of the, 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 the right people who also saw, saw the value in, in what I was doing, which, which meant I had to venture out. I couldn't stay at home and hide, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, nobody's coming to ring the doorbell. So um, I, I just had to the, – the most important thing was to change mindset, Right. Uh, from a from a negative mindset, who was me, to a, to a positive mindset, and to believe, um, and to remember something my father told me once. Um, I think I was about 19 years old. My dad said this to me. He said, "Boy, you're one of those people who can do just about anything 
they set their mind to. I, I didn't even know my father thought of me like that, right? He had never said anything like that. So that came to, to mind, too, of what my father had said many years ago. And I, I just held that in my in my head that I could do anything that I set my mind to. So in in, in, in remembering that, taking those steps, to, to get out of out of the negative quagmire, um, and, and but like I said, most importantly, was to change my mindset from negative to positive to believe anything is possible. Okay, so now thinking about our theme, and thank you so much for sharing and and you know um, <laughs> working it all out and <laughs> working it working through it the conversation. So thinking about our theme, say what you want. What are you present to when it comes to saying what you want in your personal life? Wow. What am I present to when it comes to saying what I want in my personal life? Hmm. Well, I, I don't know. You you can't, you know, um, I, I, I have this saying, you can't expect people to do what you would do, right? Because we, we all think differently. So, if there's a certain way you want to be treated, then you have to you have to say so. If you you know you can't expect people to read your mind or to read to read my mind. Um, I, I can't um, if I don't express how I feel, then I can't expect people to know how I feel. Um, if even even in dealing with my clients, you know, if if I don't tell them what I and, and be honest with them about the direction I think their actions are, are going to take their company, then I'm not doing them a, a, a good service. So I, I have to be able to tell them, hey, this is what I want you to do, uh, or, or in just dealing in, in my personal life with whoever. Hey, he, here's how I want to be treated, or here's how I don't want to be treated, or here's how I feel when you do that. Here's how I don't. Here's how I don't want to feel, and and don't want you to do that. So it's it's just you know because I'm I'm kind of a quiet person, right? Um, um, kind of got that from my dad. I, I'll just you know I don't like making a lot of waves, but I learned that you have to be able to to speak up um, and, and and tell people what you want, tell people what you need, because nobody's a mind reader, you know. Absolutely, absolutely, and thank you so much. Um, Errol, at this moment for your sharing. And I'm going to acknowledge you, Errol, for your powerful sharing in just a few minutes. But what I want to do first is I'm going to ask the team to please share what they see about their life from you, Errol, from your sharing, and the difference your sharing has created for them. Okay? So I'm going to start with Ronnie B., I'll repeat it. And um, what did you see, Ronnie B., from Errol Sharon and the difference his sharing has created for you? Well, one thing is, uh, <laughs> you know, Errol, um, I, I, what you got had me be present to was not my dad, but my Uncle Edward. And I love my Uncle Edward. My Uncle Edward was the... God, I, I mean, the man just had was just so positive, and he always, you know, uh, you know, just pointed out like, like, like you said, something that you're like, I don't even get that people see this. He would see those things in me, and one of the things he always said was, "Keep the faith, keep the faith, keep the faith." So I got, you know, so I, you know, in your sharing. You know, I really got that. Keep the faith. And the other part that, that that really stood out for me is, oh, my God, there's just no accidents in the universe. Prosperity is a mindset that can be created by anyone. That is the prosperous deep. And it's just like, wow. And, uh, you know, so... Uh, like I said, I, I really got present to that. And the, the other part is is that, you know, man, sometimes we can't see it for ourselves. 
And I, I'm so thankful you brought that up because there have been so many times that, you know, uh, well, I put it like this, those turning points, those moments of truth where I was like, Monty, what the hell are you doing? And someone, you know, it, it might just be a random email. Man, you know, this email today made a difference. Just all of a sudden, no accident in the universe. So, uh, wow, you know, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. Oh. oh, thank you, Ronnie B. I thought she was still talking a half hour ago. So, <laughs> Diva Nikki, what would you like to share, love? Oh, man. Okay, so first of all, thank you for your sharing, Errol. What I was present to by myself is, first of all, um, being able to relate to being in that spot where you you've taken the chance, you know, you you followed your intuition, you followed your spirit and your desire to start a business and become an entrepreneur, but to just venture out, right? And leaving that safety net, and then you back get against the wall, <laughs> and you're here with this truth of man. Um, it, it, am I gonna pay? Am I gonna um, fill the tank up today, or am I going to mm. have a decent lunch and fill up half the tank? Am I going to ask for help, or am I going to just see what just happens? Because um, I put myself here. I made this choice, and you know. So that's what I was present to um, for myself. And when sticking it out begins to work in your favor, and mm. in a way that that you didn't even in ways that I didn't even see happening, but the consistency and the declaration manifesting even previous decisions, you know, causing a result, and then. What I'm present to is also um, from Errol sharing is even in spite of the trial, having enough compassion and care and selflessness for your animal that's in your care. Mm. And so the animals, pets don't know. Pets, mm. look, pets do not know. Pets have an expectation. You fed me yesterday. I expect to eat today. That's <laughs> you know what I like, so uh, you, you usually give me what I like, and I expect to get what I like or to be finicky. But when you're in that crux, you know, in that, ugh, things are like, maybe not, maybe not, for, I have a cat, maybe not fancy feet. <laughs> 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 maybe Walgreens, maybe, maybe Walgreens brand of feast. <laughs> but to have, but to still be mindful of that, to be able to say, hey, they're doing better than what I am, you know. But that that goes to, that just goes back to the ability to still put something in someone else above you, you know, and be connected to that, them, and yourself at the same time, which goes to show still a commitment in between commitments. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you for sharing. So, Errol, for myself, um, one of the things that came up for me is relationships. I'm a relationship person, and... When you have people in your corner, even in the midst of going through, and those people are really rooting for you or standing for you, and you don't even realize it. And I'm the type of person that I don't extend my hand for help, but I extend my hand to help others. So when I'm going through or when I'm facing something, it's not customary for me to ask for help, whether it's embarrassment, whether it's because 
so many people have always seen me as someone that's going to survive. She's going to make it. She's going to be all right. Stuff come easy to her, but they don't know my experience and my story, right? And sometimes you don't have to even speak in those relationships with those individuals that I have. They say, Nakia, hey, what's going on? And like your friend said, think of what you've had, what what access you had. Think of your blessings. And I know it's not about the material things. It's about how God has provided and created opportunities and spaces in this lifetime for me that was specifically designed and, and available to me and wasn't meant for anybody else. But I couldn't see it sometimes because I get in my low low places, but it took somebody on the outside of me to bring it back, to allow me to represent myself. So relationships are critical, and when you have yourself surrounded by the right relationships, then it helps you in your mindset and your perseverance and your push. And the other thing that came to me was being willing to make those hard decisions even when it's uncomfortable. And those are decisions that everybody's not willing to make. Those are decisions that I'm not always willing to make. And I look at my circumstances or what I, my responsibility, and sometimes there's a compromise that has to be had in order to get to the next level. And that requires patience. It requires sacrifice of myself. It re- requires conversation between my son and I, my father, you know. So I thank you so much for your sharing and really saying what it is that I want and being authentic and transparent and being vulnerable now, learning to be vulnerable. So thank you again, and we will definitely hear more from Errol later on in the show. This was awesome. And Diva Nikki, can you please take us a break? I sure can. We will hear more from Errol later in the show. Stay tuned for the corner. We are featuring music from Heidi Tan and my interview with our guest, Errol Allen. Welcome back. We give it all to you on Grow Your Mind and Money, and we do it all with what? Love. It is time for the corner with our Mr. Ronnie. So let's give him a smooth mwah and a rose, Mr. Ronnie. Oh, my God, that was so good. Welcome to the corner. We are featuring music from Heidi Tan who loves the sound of Anita Baker. Heidi, all right, girl. Now, we asked the team to vote whether the track should get a smooch and a rose or if it needs more fertilizer. (laughs) Let's hear (laughs) when love is on the line. My mood for you, Heidi, I really am.
writing when love is on the line. Well, let's check in with the team to see whether the track should get a smooch and a rose or if it needs more fertilizer. Diva Nikki. No. Fertilizer. I like the flow. I like the rhythm. And she's a, if she wrote the song, then she's a great writer. Um, but the sound of it, the singing, is a little too flat for me. And I can definitely hear the Anita Baker influence, which is why I say that maybe she'll be a great writer. For oh, the, oh. As far as the, hmm? But as far as mm. the singing part, either some more lessons, singing lessons, vocal, vocal lessons, or, um, no, no, vocal lesson. Get some range. I feel like she sounded like she was really scared to stretch herself. So, and, and scared to really get the notes. So I didn't get the notes. All I like right. the song. Not the thing. <laughs> Fertilize. Fertilize. Okay. Our guest, Errol Allen, sir. Smooch in a rose, or you, you know, throwing out the fertilizer, sir? Well, I, I think, you know, to be honest with you, I think she could, you know, use a, a little more work. Um, I, I like the lyrics of the song. Um, the music part is, is all right. Um, kind of like what Nikki said. She's a, she's a little flat, and. Sometimes that can be because we're not in our range. She mentioned that the Anita Baker influence. I, I can remember Anita Baker being before Rapture came out. Well, maybe there were a couple of songs on one of her earlier albums, but if you go back and listen to Anita Baker's old stuff, um, there were a lot of her tunes where she was out of her range. And if it was, it wasn't until Rapture came out that you really heard Anita Baker's true voice she's um she's a contralto uh, not a soprano she's a contralto and as far as Heidi is concerned I think maybe she could you know find out what her real rank what her real tone is either she's a soprano or she's a contralto I just just a little more work you know she's I don't know what phase of her career she's in and you know we all have to uh, – there's evolution to everything. So, you know, maybe with a little more work, she could get where she really wants to be. So just a little fertilizer. With, uh, <laughs> with, uh, just, just a tan. Just a tan. I, I got you, I, I got you. But just a tan. <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, sir? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're entering the key. Uh, the fertilizer has been flowing. <laughs> I'll say you. Y'all are being real sweet, kind, generous, and very cautious with your communication. Not the truck. <laughs> Not the truck. Oh, no. Oh, oh wow. wow. <laughs> Both writing. Dump the truck. I'm saying I agree with what y'all are saying. I agree with what y'all are saying, and it's called ghostwriting because she has amazing lyrics. Yes, and she can get paid as a ghostwriter, like really paid as a ghostwriter. And she has to work on her tone, her range, and see where she really fits, and not be afraid to really express herself when she's in front of that microphone and I'm there I, I get it and I'm before I get up on the microphone I'm going to have someone to train me to make sure that I'm in my room I don't want to be embarrassed so love you <laughs> I'm going to uh, the, the spirit of this cookie lives the spirit <laughs> the truck came out of the garage to end up yeah, well Copying nobody music and her her tone and lyrics was too much like somebody else's and she needs more originality. 
she needs to allow her truth to come out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, 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 I, I, I just wanted to say that, uh, uh, Miss Heidi, you do get a second chance. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting another chance now. Up next, let's hear Miss Missing You. DJ, please roll it. I didn't hear Ronnie vote.
That was missing you. And, and you know, the, <laughs> the thing about, uh, well, I, I, let me just check in with the panel and see if missing you is getting a smooch and a rose or is, is the dump truck coming out. Empress Nakia. I just oh. want to pause for a second because, Ronnie, I didn't hear you vote. I didn't either. I didn't either. I didn't either. You were trying to get through and, and get past it. I, I'm not going to have that. Yeah. So I, I need the word for Ronnie. Is it a smooth and rolls or fertilizer for when love is on the line? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, uh, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, okay. Back, back okay. up. Wait. Dump the load. <laughs> yeah. Ronnie B. Yeah. What's your answer? I didn't hear you, sir. Uh, uh, uh fertilizer. Oh, okay. And, and I wasn't talking about a little bit either. <laughs> <laughs> Was everybody is ever did everyone hear that now? Errol, Nikki? Yeah, yeah, I heard it. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Mm-hmm. I I'd, I'd hate to have a mystery with no end. <laughs> uh, as far as this missing you, I need her to go bye bye, so I can not miss her. <laughs> I can't stand y'all. Know I can't stand when somebody take somebody's music. She took the whole darn. Uh, uh, instrumental and just made her own song. I like the word. <laughs> she has no creativity to like. I can it, you can get a karaoke machine and just play and just for sing your own words. Come on, mm-hmm. we like mm-hmm. you, uniqueness and originality. Okay, and that <laughs> just dump the damn truck. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. All right. Okay, I'm done. Sir Errol, smooth and a rose or uh, no, no. free fertilizer, sir? Um, uh, it, it sounded like Vanessa Williams dreaming is what it sounded like. Uh, huh? That's what, that's what it uh, sounded oh, like. I, I know you're saying like as a reference. <laughs> It would sound like, uh, you know, maybe it was just me, but that's what it sounded like. Um, yeah, you need a lot of fertilizer here. Um, <laughs> you need a lot of fertilizer, lot of fertilizer here. I think I'm feeling you, yeah, 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 sir, yeah, sir Arrow, with that Vanessa Williams, but nowhere in the same league. Heck no, 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 no nowhere in the. You know, she's trying to sing light, and no, just no, just no. no Not a first no. 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 All right. Okay. And uh, Diva Nikki, missing you? Yes, no. <laughs> and, and then for her to take somebody else's work. And do it zero justice. I didn't even know she had taken anybody's work. But even <laughs> here, you know, I just knew it sounded bad. <laughs> From the beginning. <laughs> and I wanted, I was struggling. I was like, am I really going to have to listen to all of this to be able, just so I can say no? <laughs> but then it's governor. Uh, two fucks of fertilizer. Mm-mm-mm. Maybe maybe look into that ghostwriting thing. I'm really looking into it. Yeah, we want right. you to win, but this may not. But this singing thing may not be your name. And, <laughs> and do the words. Don't even worry about the, the music. Let somebody else do that. But create something new to go with your words. Mm-hmm. You just sing how it's supposed to sound, but mm-hmm. don't do to somebody else. <clears throat> Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Well, well I, 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 I'm giving the track. I, I'm going to go gentle on it. 
I, I'm just throwing a bag of fertilizer on the back of the truck with the rest. <laughs> <laughs> but if you like the music from Heidi Tan, you can check her out at Heidi Tan, T A N N dot com, and the Old Grumpy Radio Network. Now it's time to continue our interview with Errol Allen, Champion for Humanity. Over to Diva Nikki. Thank you. So, here we are. My first question. For you, well, no, wait. Let me thank you for staying with me for an interview with me, and I'm so excited. And also, thanks for going through this segment with us, um, our American <laughs> Idol. So, in this segment, stop it, Nikia, leave it in the can, catch yourself. <laughs> in this segment, <laughs> we will learn more about Errol as an in international renowned customer service guru, a claimed writer and speaker, and a master of process and system design. Errol, please share the aha moment when you knew in your heart of hearts that it was time to leave the world of being an employee and having your own business was the right thing for you. <laughs> um, wow, um, 2011 is when, you know, I made the decision to, to leave corporate America. Um, but actually, the, mm, the uh, prompting had started maybe five years earlier. I, I stayed in corporate America, I'm going to say five years too long. And, um, there was there was a voice, you know, internal voice, just saying that was more, that was more for me to do. It just kept over and over. There's more for you to do. There's more for you to do. There's more for you to do, and it got so loud that I couldn't ignore it anymore, and um, I just decided to heed it and 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 step out and and leave. And you know, sometimes when we don't go when we're supposed to go, then things happen to push us. And, you know, some things started to happen, you know, there at my last corporate gig and 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 just I knew it was time to go. Um but that that was an inner voice just saying to me, It's more for you to do. There's more for you to do. So I just left. Thank you. I get it. Oh yes, I get it. What circumstances? People or new challenges come into consideration as you do the work to hone your craft and build your business? Um, you know, I, I can think of there, there's been some special people that have crossed my path that have been instrumental in, in, in helping my business to grow. Um, mm-hmm. There's a, a business coach here in Houston um, he and he and I were on a committee at the Houston West Chamber of Commerce together, and he referred me to one of his clients because there was some work that he need, needed them to do that they didn't have time to do it. So, you know, I, I, I owe him a lot. His, his name is Doug Winnie. I owe him a lot so far as, you know, helping my business to grow through referring that first um, sizable client to me, which in turn led to, you know, other referrals from him and this client. Um, um, and now what I face now is I need to duplicate myself because I'm getting so much work till it's, while it's fun for me, it's all fun for me. Um, it's getting to a point where I, I need, I need, um, to clone myself to, to expand my business. Um, and 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 to do you know other things in the same arena that I want to do. So it's um, the biggest challenge I have now. I would say is is um, cloning myself. Wow. Okay. So, what are your measures for success? 
from a personal and a business perspective? <laughs> I guess my my personal my personal measure for success is first be happy. Um, what? I, I do what I do because I love it, not for the money. But money is um, a byproduct of what I do. You know, I, I love what I do. The same thing in my personal life is you know to be happy, whatever that means oh. for for. You know, individuals. You know, my happy is different from somebody else's happy. Um, so I don't you know, look for a certain dollar amount. Is my question to myself is, you know, are you happy? And when I can tell myself truly, tell myself, yeah, then I'm okay. That's then I'm being successful. Um, so it's just two words for me. Well, two words: be happy, and then three words: do what you love. Um, mm-hmm. so that that's. That's success to me. Being happy and doing what you love. So what is one thing that makes you happy that you said that when you experience this or you do this, you say this is part or this is a this is the evidence or the result of me being successful? <laughs> the evidence or the result of me being successful. Mhm. One thing. One just one thing that that makes you happy. Wow, just being able to do what I do, right? Um, I, I don't, I don't look at, oh, okay, what I drive, you know. Okay, it's nice, you know, and, and I like it, but for me, that's not. I'm happy that I have it, but I, I look at every day I get to do what I love to do, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's the one thing that that's a constant for me. Is every day I, I I get up and 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 I'm able to do what I love to do. Um, wow. There's there's no, there's no regret. There's no I want to do this today. You know, even when I have you know, um, um, you know, some of my clients, I wouldn't say they're difficult. Um, some can be a little more stubborn than others. And even in that, you know, it, it's I'm still happy because I'm I'm doing what I love to do. Um, so you know, I, I don't, for me, it's just being happy and and, and okay. having an opportunity to do what I want to do. Okay, I was just trying to see if there was something specific that you can name, but it's literally just a, a state of being and doing. Got it. So, please share a specific moment or event where your efforts bring a smile to your face, even today. <laughs> All right. Um, I was getting ready to go to Boulder, Colorado. Um, I, I can remember like this was like it was yesterday. I was sitting on the airplane at um, Hobby Airport, and we were pushing back. And I looked out the window, and I said to myself, this is actually happening. I, I, I have an out-of-town client that I'm going to – today to start a project and it actually brought you know brought tears to my eyes smile to my face and and, and and tears to my eyes and even when I think even as I'm talking about it now I'm sitting here smiling because um, that was that was a big turning point for me um, in in the, on the business side it was a big turning point that meant that I was getting some traction. Um, not, not only here in Houston, but outside of Houston, and and to be able to sit there and think about, think back to 2014 that I shared with y'all earlier, to sitting on that airplane, going to start a new project out of town, that 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 still brings a smile to my face. Got it. Thank you. So we're going to now ask the team to please share what they see about their life from Errol Sharing and the difference his sharing created for them. Mr. Ronnie? Thank you, Diva Nikki. And Errol, um, two things that this that that really threw you know, just stood out. Well actually three things that really stood out for my life. And I love it that you're at the point in your business where you see cloning yourself 
is the next step, the, the appropriate thing. And that has its own dynamics and challenges because, you know, with, with any person that's built, create something, you know what's in your mind. You know? <laughs> and you hope everyone else gets it by osmosis. <laughs> And as best as you can write it, put it on paper, vocalize it, go over it a million times, they're not in your skin. So, uh, I, I, you know, yeah, I just want to commend you for getting the, the challenge of that and the love of it. Because when, you know, and, 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 and it just has me look at, you know, what I'm doing with uh, with Nikki and the Kia and the, and the ladies and just the whole family that's the old Grumpy Radio Network. And uh, it just touches my heart. So thank you. Uh, you know, and it's like, now I'm not cloning myself because uh, 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 they have their own divine, unique gifts. What I'm learning is how to work with them in a way that works for them that makes a difference for us all. And, and that's like, you know, like, Wow. How do I break myself of my idea, how I think things should go? So, so thank you. And then, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, right? <laughs> uh, be happy. And, um, you know, uh, you know, that's <laughs> the song, everything is going to be all right. Just time, time, right. time, time. Right. Consistency, right. commitment. You know, I, I, you know, I, you know, I get a thousand times. I, I want to have everything perfect now. Well, guess what? It ain't. So what? Wait, wait until. Let me wait until this. No, get in action. And I've learned that you, you, you get stuff in order real quick when your butt is on the line. So uh, thank you. And, uh, man, you love, you got, you know, I just got present to, to loving the unlovable. There are details about this business that I could not pay these ladies to do. They don't want to do it, and they ain't going to do it. I don't want to do it, but they need to be done. <laughs> you know? And um, And there's a point where, you love that, like, you know, looking at spreadsheets and database and all that stuff, you know, because it's what's necessary. But then there's a point where you, you know, it, you won't be, be in that world, but you kind of, it, it'll be a memory. It'll be a memory. So, uh, wow, just, just really inspired me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, what I'm present to is one I have been playing too small. Mm. I have not been putting myself at issue to the magnitude that I need to in order for me to produce the results that I expect to produce mm. and not the results that others expect me to produce. Because I can produce results for everybody else easily. <laughs> but it's those results that I desire to produce for myself that is always in my face. Mm. And that is what I'm present to on that. Um, I was listening to Ronnie and, 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 and kind of lost track of what else was present for me. But that in itself is clear. And it, it, you shared, I'm trying to, it's, it's like on the tip of my tongue. Um, oh, Ronnie. <laughs> I blame it on you, Ronnie. Uh, me losing my, <laughs> my train of thought. Um, oh, cloning yourself, cloning yourself. That is a great place to be. You know, most of the time is not having enough business, not having enough opportunity, not having enough, 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 enough. Mm. Your experience is I have so much and I love doing what I do and I enjoy it so much. And it's not about the finances. That's just the blessing 
you know, because my commitment is for the passion that I have of what I'm doing and my commitment to do it, and I love doing it. That is the space that I want to be in. Mm. And needing to clone myself, so to speak, but not necessarily having to do all the work, but being able to produce mm. <clears throat> of me enough to get it done with the same level of passion and commitment to where the foundation remains intact and there's not people that are just coming in for the money or for the glory or for the mm. acknowledgement, but because mm-hmm. they have heart to really want to be present and available and committed to the client at the level the clients really need someone to pre- be present for them at. So thank you. And those were the things that really stood out for me and made a difference in my listening. Thank you. And for I am actually present to everything everybody else shared. But so the thing though that I want to speak on is about the being the being happy. Like that's your place of being. That being your measure. Not a fancy ride or or not, you know, changing zip codes, changing area codes, just being and to be that way because you are doing what you love and it's making a difference. So being happy and doing what I love. Mm. Being happy and doing what I love. And to the degree of to that point to where cloning myself is a domain. Mm. Well, Errol, we could be here for hours on end and talk to you, but it's time for us to go for a break. So, Empress Nakia, please take us to break. Up next, Shawnee's Sunshine Lounge, plus Lose the Baggage. Hmm, please stay tuned. Give it all to you on Grow Your Mind and Money. And we do it all with love. Shawnee left the keys to the lounge with Diva Nikki. So let's see what's going on in the lounge. Diva Nikki, what you have for us today? Yeah. Welcome to Shiny Sunshine Lounge, where we feature a mixture of goodies that will stimulate your mind and maybe. As you tap your feet, tonight we have an awesome poet, Lisa Beatwell. We're going to find out if she's awesome, okay? Performing Love Poem, Don't Cry, Love. Roll it over. Come on, DJ. Don't say it unless you mean it. Don't say it unless you mean it. Because my heart can spy with this little why that you've said it before a thousand times and never really meant it. I don't want our time well spent to end up in regret, so don't say it unless you mean it. If the truth be told, if I had one dollar for every time a man told me that he loved me, I'd be in debt. You see, my heart is already insufficiently funded, and I don't think I'll have the emotional collateral to pay it back, so don't say it unless you mean it. I can't help but feeling like a little girl talks into playing a game I'm not prepared for. I keep showing up to your chess matches with my best checker moves. So while I scream king me and you shall checkmate mind boggle, I'm still scrambling for a copy of the rules on how to check out a king to make me. Meanwhile, too many disappointments keep me from saying it. You see, the beauty of my love has been replaced with pain, but if beauty is pain and pain is my life, then life is a feast. That's why the beauty in me is sleep inside. In my dreams, we don't cry it. In my dreams, we don't sing it. In my dreams, we cling to it. In my dreams, we need it. Why? What big dreams I have. Forget about dreaming. When I arise, I want to hear it. But not from someone who has cried it many times. You see, 18 was I when he cried it to her. 20 was I when he cried it to her. 23 am I and he cries it to her. Three blind loves of mine crying. 
and the other seven couldn't see past my panty line, so they never really cared for my butterflies. But there will be one who doesn't cry and never lies. He invented butterflies. I see moronically he rumples and stills my skin at the same time. One day he'll feel it. He'll try another heart so he discover my love is perfectly. And so then I will continuously refine my love's recipe because I have boiled over love. I undercooked love. I overcooked and burnt up love. So I refuse to be anybody's leftover love. Then again, how much love could an unloved girl cook up if an unloved girl could cook up love? She would love. She would. And cook up as much love as any unloved girl could if an unloved girl could cook up love. So prove this twisted heart wrong, but don't say it unless you mean it. Because the truth is that I dare not to promise to repeat it until I mean it. Well, snap in a snap. Well, 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 <laughs> panel. Is love poem Don't Cry Love by Lisa B. Getting some snap, 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 or some rotten tomatoes. Oh. Empress Tia was, um, okay. was a Okay. Honey, 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 I promise not to say love until I love love and I feel love and I know love for one that has never experienced love, love. Snap, snap, toe tap. What? On point. Yay! All right. Now, over the, I'm not girl, I felt that too, okay? Carol Allen, what say you, Felicia Lee? I'll give a snap. She has a lot of energy. You know, I, 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 I'll, I'll give her some snaps. Don't be scared. I'll give her some snaps. A lot, a lot of energy. <laughs> You know, message was good. You know, she she gets snaps from me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you, thank you. And Mr. Ronnie? Yep, snap, snap, and a toe tap. Oh, you want to try to run away on this one, huh? Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Coming well, from the hip place. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am giving... Our Lisa B, I'm giving her snap, 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 and I'm jingling keys, and I'm clapping my hands, clapping my feet, all of that. It was a wonderful delivery, a great message, love the energy, and I'm looking for some more for some Lisa B. Now, if you enjoy the performance from Lisa B, you can check her out on YouTube and the old Grumpy Radio Network. Now, over to Mr. Ronnie for Lose the Baggage. How about I'll take over Lose the Baggage, Ronnie B., if you don't mind. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ronnie did an hour, but lost his back. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the Empress of Faith, Empress Nakia. I'm going to go ahead and take care of Lose the Baggage. I'm going to let Ronnie B. sit on the sideline for a hot second, all right? So... If you compare Grow Your Mind and Money to an airline, you would notice we have no planes, no check-in lines, no attendants, pilots, or flights. What we promise is we will support you in losing your baggage. Now, baggage in this case is in the form of a complaint. But not just any old complaint, a complaint that has persisted over time. Now, this complaint does not have to be something traumatic or upsetting, and it could be. The complaint can be a simple or as simple as, I wish my spouse would take out the garbage. It pisses me off when they just leave it for me to take out. Why can't they just take out the damn trash? (laughs) If you are someone who never complains, maybe you have nonverbal complaints. You know something or someone rubs you the wrong way, but you always let it go, but it really does rub you the wrong way, and you might get a little pissy about it. But you don't say anything. Now, consider that a complaint. Now, we're going to do an exercise. Y'all know I love to do exercises. (laughs) Oh, my bad. I digress. Okay, so now we're going to do a little exercise. (laughs) Arrow. So we're doing it with Arrow. Okay. So you good, Nikki? (laughs) I'm okay. All right. It ain't funny, but I'm okay. <laughs> so we asked Errol 
you know, ask him to look at an area of life that's important to him for a uh, for a persistent complaint. Now, let me give you a little context for our conversation. As human beings, we love to be right. Like, I'm always right, never wrong, that kind of right, okay? And often what hides something from our view is our righteousness. In a kind world, it's not righteousness. We are simply right. That's all. Now, create the following categories. For those who know me, you always have to have pen, paper, pencil, something in hand to write with, something to write on, notebook, notepad, however. Keep your journal, possibility journals, all right? So create the following categories, money, freedom, relationships, and health. Four categories today, money, relationships, freedom, and health, money, freedom, relationships, and health. Okay, so what we would like you to do is select a category where you would like to have a breakthrough. Under that category, write down a complaint or issue you have that has persisted for a while. And when that issue comes up, what way of being rises with it? Now, for context, do you get angry or maybe sad, okay, resigned or even indifferent? Whatever way you feel expressed as a way of being. If you rarely complain, select a category and answer this question, because we have people who rarely complain, so they think, okay, okay. What have I been putting up with or resisting or giving up on? Matt, repeat it again. What have I been putting up with or resisting or giving up on? Okay. So write the complaint that keeps persisting in that area. Now, write what way you are being around this issue or how do you behave? Okay, so now Errol, our guest, Nikki, and Mr. Ronnie are doing this exercise with you, as well as I, okay? What is the future that immediately gets created when the issue comes up is the question. Now, I also want you to consider how do you behave? Also answer the question, how do you feel? And the other question, what actions do you take? So those are four separate questions. What is the future that immediately gets created when the issues come up? How do you behave? How do you feel? And what actions do you take? Now, let me check in with everyone while you're creating, okay, and see how they're doing with the exercise as well. So first and foremost, we're going to Mr. Ronnie. Now, Mr. Ronnie, let's step through the process. I would like for you to please share the category first, complaint, and the way you behave or feel when the issue arises. Then I would like for you to share what is the future that gets created immediately when the issue arises? All right. Well, thank you, Ann. Um, <clears throat> the category is relationships, and the persistent complaint is I have a buddy, and we're really great friends. And when he visits me, he has this conversation. And the conversation is about his sex life when he was younger, back in the day. Yeah. Now, for, for me, it irritates the hell out of me because, one, it just reminds me of what I used to call old men conversations, where I'd hear the old men talk about their conquest. And I wasn't like that. You know, I, I'm one of these guys who at heart is a romantic. You know, like I like to watch the romantic. I love romantic things. 
and oh. and, and that's my dream. I I love being a romance, and uh, you know, and, and the thing is, what it really brings up, just to really be honest, is the resentment I have that all of them guys cheated on their wives. Because that was the thing to do. And if you weren't that way, you were a sissy or a punk. Wow. And I'm a romantic guy, you know. And and and, and so, uh, you know, for him to bring that up, you know, I, the, I started getting pissed off and resentful. And I don't want to hear it. And, and this is my friend. I want him to be, you know, free to, you know, hey, man, say, say what you say. And uh, so uh, the categories of relationships, the persistent complaint is that uh, I'm having to listen to this, this teenage conversation. And, what, and the future that comes up is, that's immediately there is, the next time he comes over, he's going to start the same conversation. Wash, rinse, repeat. Got it. Wash, rinse. Repeat. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I hope y'all got something from that. So at this point, I'm going to share my category, my persistent complaint, and way I behave or feel when the issue arises for me. The future that gets created immediately when the issue arises for me. Okay? So my area is health. Now, my persistent complaint is I do not get enough exercise. So I have a coach, and we have a coaching call every Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. like clockwork. No, excuse me, 5.15 p.m. like clockwork. We talk for a while. (laughs) It rolls over into 6 o'clock. So every week we talk about everything, how the week has gone, all of this information. Now, I know In the conversation, we're going to talk about my weight, me getting on the scale, how much do I weigh now, have I gotten on the scale, what exercises have I done for the week? Because each time we create a structure and a schedule for me to complete a specific task each week, and I am the one who creates it. I'm the one who says, well, this is what I'm going to do, ride the bike twice a week, go walking twice a week, whatever it is that I choose, and I always include my son. So it's time for another phone call. And before that call, I start to get really anxious because I know that I have not honored my word in completing the exercise or that specific exercise that I agreed to, and I find reasons not to do it and try to justify it. So I immediately get disappointed in myself, and I get present to the fact that I blew off exercising again. And I tell myself, okay, I'm going to do the exercise, I'm going to recommit, and I don't do it, and it's up to me. So the future that comes up for me is I tell myself I'm going to do an exercise, specific exercises, riding the bike or however. I don't do it, and I begin to feel guilty, disappointed, ashamed. Hmm. That is the future that gets created. So, Diva Nikki, please share your category, persistent complaint, and the way you behave or feel when the issue arises. What is the future that gets created immediately when the issue arises? Wash, rinse, repeat. (laughs) Okay, so I chose relationships. And my persistent complaint is, in this area, is clarity in communication with someone that I work closely with. And the way that I'm being around the issue and or how I behave with the issue is when when the communication when there's a break of clarity or a break in the communication, I my way of behaving is beginning is res 
resigning, feeling indifferent, and and being distant. Mm, got it. What is the future that gets created immediately when the issue arises? The future that gets created immediately when the issue arises is all. Oh, so is me distancing myself. And how does that make you feel? That makes me feel frustrated. Okay. And wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a terrible vicious cycle. <laughs> okay. Errol. Okay. So yes, ma'am. Errol, share your category. Um, your persistent complaint and the way you behave or feel when the issue arises. <laughs> Um, my category is relationships. Um, I guess my biggest complaint in the relationship area is, it, and it, it, it comes in the form of a question, right? Um, and this is going to get me in trouble. It's going to get me in trouble probably with Nick and Nikki or out the back and probably with, <laughs> probably with other women that listen to this. But my complaint is in, in, why do women feel that men should do all the chasing? Oh, oh. <laughs> you know, that's I'm on mute. <laughs> <What? laughs> we don't have any. There's nothing wrong, Errol. So go ahead. So your area is relationship. And why do women always have to be the one to feel that men have to do all the chasing? Go ahead, Errol. Right, right, right. I'm just. That's just very a, good, Nikki. That's just um, it's an issue in in my mind, right? It's like I'm I'm just thinking there should, if there's mutual interest, then act like it, you know. Don't don't play games and you know make the man do all the work and and I'm kind of like if you're interested, then every now and then look back over your shoulder to let me know you see me chasing you, um, mm. you know. So that's that's just a you know, that's a that's a complaint I have in the relationship area. And I, how I just, does I, Oh, I'm sorry. I get it. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. How does that make you feel when that issue arises? Oh, I feel, you know, frustrated and aggravated and and um that's just how I feel, frustrated and aggravated. Okay, got it. Got it. And the cycle continues. And you wash, rent, and repeat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the immediate future that's created when I feel like that is I need to step off, you know, and, and, and stop. Mm. That's, that's usually what happens. Wow. Got it. Anything else for you, Errol? No, ma'am. I think I said no. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. And you are <laughs> to the entire world, okay, Errol? So we thank you for sharing yeah. your participation, even though Nikki over there being, you know, mischievous. So having seen the future that gets created immediately when the issue arises, what is now possible in dealing with the issue that would give you the freedom and power? So, Mr. Ronnie, Excuse me, your issue was relationships. What do you see now see possible? Well, well, one thing that I, you know, that I really see is that, um, one, that there's an impact mm-hmm. on having that complaint. Because one, it's like, 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 you know, the one thing that we do in the training, in our training and in this work, is is that there's no thing that we have that we're not getting something out of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That we're get, we're getting something out of, and it's to have us avoid responsibility. Yeah. And you know, one of the things I see is is that you know I could be a man and just say, hey, brother, you know, I'm not into that. Can we please not have that kind of conversation? Yeah. You know, I like I can I can actually do that, mm. and 
But what is really there, what is really there is, dude, do you think I'm that kind of guy? Mm. See, that's what's really there. Do you think I'm that kind of guy? Haven't I demonstrated that really I'm kind of a romantic guy who really, really busts his ass to treat women well and pray that with that respect, the right one will show up? Because mm. all my actions are consistent with that. So, you know, so I get that, that there's that level of inauthenticity. Like, I, like I'm a victim. Like, like I got a problem. Uh, Diva Nikki, have you seen me have a problem with opening my mouth and stuff coming out? <laughs> Occasionally, but yeah, but not really. But okay, all right. <laughs> okay, all right. So, uh, uh, okay, that's honest. That's authentic. That's authentic. But it ain't like on a regular basis. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, so, uh, but uh, and, and what I what I really see uh, uh, possible is is hey, uh, going forward and then the chips fall where they like. Mm, got it. Got okay. it. Okay. Thank you for sharing, Ronnie. Say what you want. Okay. My issue is and was the area of health. Um, And now what I see possible is owning up to my choices and being okay with the choices that I make and holding myself accountable and responsible for the outcome of those choices. So giving my word, I'm going to give my word to doing something, and I will commit to doing it and honoring my word. And if I don't do it because I choose not to, restoring integrity in the space in which I gave my word to complete something and being responsible for whatever the consequence is and the payoff that I get for not taking care of my health and well-being. So, it's more important for me to be responsible for my health and well-being so I can be around. And that means honoring my word by working in whatever way that that looks like, and I give my word to doing so. So that's what's possible for me. So, Diva Nikki, your issue Mm -hmm. was relationship. Mm -hmm. What Mm -hmm. is possible? What I see possible is, what I see possible is, generosity and the effort and the continued effort to get the communication and the clarity that I that I that is needed for both myself and the other individual and, and others involved. And also grace and I see the possibility of I see the possibility of um freedom. Mm. I see the pop- uh, yeah I see the pop- yeah I see the possibility of freedom because let's be honest you know or, or let me be honest there's certainly no fun in distancing yourself from people that you love and need yeah and vice versa you know mm-hmm. got it yeah thank you Nikki for sharing that in your transparency and authentic sharing as w- that's what we do on the Grow Your Mind and Money Network, right? Oh, Grumpy Radio Network. Grow Your mm-hmm. Mind and Money. But that's probably the prosperity team. Absolutely. So, Errol, your issue also was relationship. What do you now see possible? Miss Errol? Errol? I'm here. Can you hear me? No. Oh, okay. I thought the women came, I thought the women yeah. came to get you. <laughs> Now we can now we can hear you, Errol. So your issue was relationships, okay? And Not think about you. Possible. Um, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, Going on. Go ahead, Nikki. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you need me to repeat it one more time? Yeah, go right here. Yes, ma'am. Please, ma'am. Okay, w- Errol. What was your your issue with relationships, Nikki? Don't you say a word. What do you now see possible, Errol? You know what is to remain hopeful 
um, that I will meet somebody where um, the the willingness to let that the the the, the actions are mutual, right? Um, it's not just one person taking action to show interest. I'm going to remain hopeful um, in 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 that area um, versus complaining about what I don't want. Because what I told y'all initially, um, my my initial complaint: Why do women feel that men should? Not, that's I'm, I'm acknowledging what I don't want, right? So I'm going to remain hopeful in what I do want, um, and, and, and that is somebody who shows mutual and is 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 not afraid to show mutual interest or chooses not to play that game. Um, you know what I mean? I um, know. So I'm going to remain hopeful in that. That's that's the possibility that I see is to remain hopeful in what I want and not in what I don't want. Thank mm. you, Carol. I got that. Does all that make men, sense? And all the yeah. women that. And all the men <laughs> too. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> and, 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 Errol, even though this, this is uh, – the, the Empress is doing this fantastic with this segment. I just want to offer you something. Yes, sir. And it 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 and, it, and it's uh, say what you want. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. Say what you don't and don't make an excuse or explain yes, it. Just say it. Hey, I want a woman who puts her butt on the line and lets me know that I'm her baby. That's right. Say That's what right. you want. That's Say right. what you want tonight. You ain't Say it. what you want. Say what you want. You know, Brian, I, almost you to kiss, sure. I almost want to kiss myself two times. Oh, Lady <laughs> Sarah. <Jeez. laughs> I'm telling you, the energy that that just them all forth over here. <laughs> <laughs> you can sort it up sometimes if you don't want to say how you're going to get in trouble. You have no idea how much of a contribution you just were, okay? So, <laughs> with that being said, let me thank Diva Nikki and Mr. Ronnie and Mr. Errol for sharing in the experience and the exercise. And... A lot of ends in there, y'all. We don't like to say that. A lot of ends. Okay. A special <laughs> to Mr. Errol for being so generous and playing with us during this exercise. This exercise is not about fixing anything. Mm. It is about providing an access to power that you can create. I'm going to say that one more time. This exercise is not about fixing anything, and I want everyone to be clear with that. It is about providing an access to power that you and you alone can create. So, Diva Nikki, I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, can you take us to break, love? I sure can. Coming up in the next segment, the finale, Errol's final interview and future will. Welcome back. We give it all to you on Grow Your Mind and Money, and we do it all with love. Over to Diva Nikki for the finale. Ooh, the finale. The good stuff. So, Erin, thank you for sharing. I have only a few more questions, so let's go. Number one, what challenges do you see 
lurking in the war that will try to slow you down or take you off the path from having your ability succeed beyond expectation. Wow. What challenges do I see lurking that will try to slow me down? Okay. You know, just think about what I just said. I, I try to think about what I want and not what I don't want. So I, I, I don't find myself looking for things lurking that's going to try to slow me down or take me off my path, right? Um so I guess I don't see anything, you know, lurking or, or in the waters that's that's going to try to slow me down because I'm, I'm not looking for it, right? You, you, we attract to ourselves, you know, what we talk about, think about, and believe. So, mm-hmm. you know, I try my best not to think like that, um, thing that's going to slow me down and take me off my path. I try my best. Not to not to even go that route, you know, in, in my okay. mindset, to be honest with you. Now, I can dig it. Hey, <laughs> law of attraction, what you think right. about, you attract. I get it. Thank you. I Thank you for not seeking for something to be wrong, just to answer the question, okay? Right. So, number two. Please share two pitfalls you have seen people fall into when it comes to being consistent in their actions for having their dreams and desires manifested. Two pitfalls. Let's say um, two challenges, maybe. Um, Not believing that it can happen. And not hanging in there, you know, when things get tough. Because it's important. Here's what. Here's what. Here's here's something I tell a friend of mine. You know, I I I, I tell her, hey, close your eyes and see where it is you want to be, and then open your eyes and believe you can get there. So mm. it's it's. it's it's important to, no matter what's going on now, like right now, no matter what's going on, still be able to see where it is you want to be. And then that'll that'll help you to take the actions you need to take to get there. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. So in the, the, the two challenges, once again, is to um, being able to believe that you can make it and then um, just hanging in there. You, I, you know, I, I, I hate to see people give up on themselves. Um, mm-hmm. So if, if, if I can help anybody, to stay away from those two things, not believing and not hanging in there, you know, because uh, both of those, if you go the opposite direction, believing that you can and then taking actions because you believe that you can, that can change your life. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Thank you. Now, would you please share with us one action or one practice you use daily to keep yourself in action and focused on the results you intend to produce. Hmm. Um, one thing that I try to do every day is to remind myself of who I am. Um, and, and meaning, um, here's here's what I think, and, and maybe y'all can write it down. I tell myself I am whole and perfect, strong, strong and powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy. Mm, oh my! 
I felt that. Repeat that one more again. I am whole and perfect, strong and powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy. Thank you. I felt that error. Welcome back, Mr. Ryan. Now, tell us this. What do you have on your plate? And how can our listeners learn more about your services and projects? What do I have on my Well, currently I'm, I'm you know, dealing with my consulting clients. I have a different client every day that I work with. Um, some days I have two clients. Um, I'm also putting together some process documentation workshops to help business owners to learn how to document their processes. Um, hopefully I'll start doing those in the first quarter of next year. Um And I'm thinking about writing another book, too, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, um, I've had people to ask me, when's your next book coming out? When's your next book coming out? So I'm really thinking about writing another book. Um, so those are just some of the things that, that are on my plate. Um, uh, your listeners can learn about me by going to my website and um, – www.errolallenconsulting.com. Um, everything that I do is, is on my website. Um, or if they just want to ask, they can email me at arrow at errolallenconsulting.com. Mm, all right. Thank you. So, yes, ma'am, you're welcome. Now, See, anything you would like to share or acknowledge from the interviews? Empress Nakia? Um, I would just like to acknowledge you, Errol, for the journey that you have gone on and the journey that you're on now, Okay that is continuing to lead you into your experiences and your final destination. And I say that with an S. For your consistency, your persistence, and your choice to remain positive and see the light in the midst of any amount of darkness that can ever your path, for being gracious with who you are for the world, for being a champion for humanity, for really sharing and being authentic and vulnerable during our conversation this evening, to sharing your practices and standing by your self-affirmation, because I can't say it yet, but I'm going I'm to get it right. <laughs> that in itself is so powerful and speaks volumes to the world because if we don't fight for who we are, I don't fight for who I am, then nobody oh. is going to fight for me. Nobody else is going to know me to be who I declare myself to be, each right. and every moment of my being. Right. And in order to survive and in order to 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 get there, wherever that there is, you have to have something that is worth standing on and standing for your why to get you to your final destination. So thank you again for being gracious and honoring your word, and being present with us this evening. This has been awesome. I knew you were a great person. Now you just <laughs> give more to the world. So thank, well, well, you. Hey, thank, hey. you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. 
and and thank you for having me on. It's been fun for me, so I appreciate the opportunity to be with y'all today. Oh man, that is so great, Mr. Ronnie. What would you like to share, or if not? Well, one, uh, Errol, I definitely thank you for being on the show today and and all the preparation work that goes into the production. And uh, so, so I wanted to honor that. But, uh, uh, Errol, uh, I, I take it that you're a man of your word. I try to put out yeah. the Okay, yes, all right. So, yes. all right, you know, I, I take that to be accurate. So, I'm going to make a request, and it's going to be like a really an outrageous request, and it's going to be a powerful request. And here's my request. Here we go. Yeah, and and here's my request. My request is that you promise that you give your word by January 1st of 2020, you'll be dating the woman of your dreams. Do you do you accept the uh, request? I, I I accept that you you have put it out into the universe, sir, and you know I, I accept that, and I'm just gonna flow with it, right? You know, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would call that perfect. Uh, back to you, Diva Nikki. Hey, people, what's up? Hey. Um, the first thing I want to share is the energy. Um, I want to express the energy that you have given during the show and your, how well you just, you didn't just go with the flow, but became a part of the flow. Yeah. There was going with the flow, and then there was the part where you actually became a part of the flow, and it's very distinct. So I want to thank you for that. The second thing I want to do is I want to acknowledge your amazing book, Keys to the Li- Keys to Delivering Amazing Customer Service. This is a must have book for any business owner, any entrepreneur, any aspiring business owner and entrepreneur, you want this book because nothing will help your business grow more than good customer service and the word of mouth that comes with it. Get this book. There's a reason why he is internationally renowned. And I repeat, keys to delivering amazing customer service. Errol, please stay for the rest of the show. Thank you for your sharing and being on Grow Your Mind and Money. It has been wonderful. And over to you, Empress Nikia, for future wealth. Thank you, Nikki. So, you know what time it is. <laughs> we experience the occurring world and future from conversations we choose to generate. Having the future and occurring world we desire. Experience, express, and producing results in our lives. Okay. So we have a little exercise intended to empower you in clearing the space so you can be present to your occurring world and future. Now create the following category so everybody knows, pen, paper, in hand, whatever you want to write with, type it up. Create these following categories, relationships, money, well-being. If y'all hear me clapping, I'm sorry. I'm excited. <laughs> y'all know I like doing this. So, because it's, it's like putting everybody in action. It's time to go to work. So create the following categories, relationships, money, and well-being. Those three categories. Under each category, answer this question, where or with 
whom do I lack freedom or the future fuck? Nikki declared freedom tonight. Did y'all get that? Wow. So, next, answer these questions. How long have I lacked freedom or the future sucks in this area or with this person or of people? Am I willing to have a breakthrough in this area or with this person or group of people? Be honest. It is not good or bad if you are not willing to have a breakthrough. So it's simply what Now let me repeat that. Be honest. It is not good or bad if you are not willing to have a breakthrough. It is simply what so. Now, if you're willing to have a breakthrough in this area or with this person or a group of people, what conversation are you willing to have that will allow you to be vulnerable so other people can see your strength? The access to power is communication. Your ability to be vulnerable is the key to your breakthrough. The access to power is communication. And your ability to be vulnerable is the key to your breakthrough. Now keep working on this exercise during the week. If you have any questions or need coaching, email us at divas at ProsperousDivas.com. And remember, a world of peace and prosperity, one listener at a time. Until next time, grow your mind and money. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Peace, love, and blessings. We're out.